Among the many possibilities of holography, holographic interferometry has been developed and applied in practice. How does it work? If we overlap the real object and the holographic image, we shall have a common wave front for both. If we deflect the object, interference fringes will appear. The image of the object and the deflected object itself now give two different wave fronts. The fringes are a result of the interference of these wave fronts. Holography enables the current observation and measurement of object deflections exact to fractions of a micrometer. This technique, called real-time observation, requires a very stable holographic stand and a great deal of practical experience. The hologram itself must be securely fastened and after photochemical treatment, replaced exactly in its original position. Then, the real-time observation and the measurement of object surface deflections is possible. A holographic map of deflections is formed by the fringes. Without holography, this would be very difficult. A minimal change in the screw pressure gives a legible deformation image. as well as all the thermal deformations. All ones caused by the change in humidity, showing here the defects of the base. A slight modification of the optical system allows the holographic registration of transparent objects which pass light, the so-called phase objects. In cases like this, holography produces images similar to those known in classical interferometry. We are now observing the temperature distribution of air surrounding a heated wire. Using scattered light, it is also possible to obtain three-dimensional images of phase objects. This was, of course, impossible in classical interferometry. Gas convection in a light bulb. A clear image of the phenomenon has been formed, although we are observing it through the walls of the bulb. And now an even more interesting experiment a glass of water and a spoon of a different temperature. Unbelievable! Convection currents in pure water in an ordinary container, which is furthermore cylindrical. Classical interferometry would here be completely helpless. of real-time observation is very inviting, but requires the use of an especially long time stable stand. For this reason, the technique based on double exposure of a hologram is more often applied in practice. The object is recorded in two static states, for example, before and after tightening the screw. We obtain a frozen fringe pattern as a result of the deflections of the object. The simple holographic plate holder is sufficient here. The first exposition, and after the object deformation, the second one. Here is the object we saw previously with its deflections, after tightening the screws. deflections of a piston for three different temperatures.
The double exposure holography is often used in non-destructive testing. A plate deformed by the central force. And here is the reason for the fringe deformation. An imperceptible cut of the plate. This technique can also be used for phase objects. Here is a reconstructed image of the diffusion of two liquids. The shape of the fringes near the boundary between the liquids gives quantity information allowing the calculation of diffusion coefficient. The emission of light by objects under investigation is no obstacle in holography. An interference filter can eliminate it. The image of ion concentration in a lamp's plasma. We already know the technique of investigating static objects. Is it possible to investigate, for example, vibrating objects? Observation of a vibrating turbine blade through the hologram of the blade gives us information about the modal shapes, but not very readable. Better results were obtained by recording a single exposed hologram during the object vibrations, analogically to photography, by photographing vibrating elements for a long exposure time. We call this a time average registration. As a result, we obtain maps of blade vibration amplitudes. This technique does not require powerful lasers and complicated optical systems. It is important to keep harmonic vibrations of the object, which do not exceed several micrometers. The realization of these requirements allows us to obtain beautiful successive modes of the circular plate. The brightest regions correspond to motionless places of the plate. They show nodal lines. Periodic vibrations are the only form of motion which we can measure in this way. In other cases, the object mustn't move during the exposure time. Thus, the holographic registration of moving objects requires the application of pulse lasers. Here is the holographic system with a powerful laser. We will use this system to record a holographic portrait because it appears that the human face is in constant movement and the exposure time required for registration should not exceed a microsecond. We have obtained a beautiful three-dimensional holographic portrait. This one is less beautiful, since it is double exposed. In technical application, the double pulse technique is very often used. It also enables, for example, the investigation of vocal organ vibrations. And here is an experiment especially made for this film. We will observe the behavior of an object being shot through. The laser pulse is controlled by the moving bullet. 
we will also be able to observe the shock wave caused by the shot. And here is our hero. He is standing still, not sensing anything as yet. The bullet is still far away, but the shock wave is already approaching. Now the wave has reached our hero, but he hasn't had time to react. Finally, he reacts. And here is the bullet. It hits, producing a reflected wave, and goes straight through. Only holography allows us to witness this story. Screenplay and production, cooperation, scientific materials, and consultation. Animation, drafting, sound, management. This film was produced by the Commission of the Technical University of Łódź in the Institute of Fluid Flow Machinery and the Institute of Applied Mechanics and also in the Central Optical Laboratory 